So you're getting started in the game of tennis, or maybe you're already a tennis player, but you're looking to start playing more regularly and you're ready to invest in a tennis racket. Well, good news, you're in the right place, you're watching the right video, because today I'm going to tell you my three favorite beginner rackets, and I'm also gonna give some suggestions for kind of economy rackets for, for those players that are just kind of dabbling in the sport. Now, if you love the game of tennis, you're invested, you've played, and you're like, this is for me, I'm ready to get started, then we wanna start with kind of the tweener rackets. And those are the rackets that we're gonna be focusing on today. And these rackets are gonna help you learn proper technique, but also ensure that you have the best timer court because they're user friendly. Let's first talk about the attributes that make up a good beginning tennis racket. The first thing that we have to talk about is racket head size. And so what the racket head size is referring to is the circumference of the frame encircling the strings. This is your racket head, all right? And they come in a wide range. You can find them as small as 88, you can find them as large as 120, so there's a lot of different sizes. Now, my advice is find a racket that's somewhere between 100 square inches and 110 square inches. So here we have the Wilson Clash 108. This is going to be more advantageous for a beginner as opposed to say like the Yonix E-Zone with the 98 square inches because of the sweet spot. If you look at the E-Zone 98, which is more of a player's racket, this is for an experienced player, the sweet spot is gonna be much, much smaller and it's not gonna be particularly forgiving on the outside of the frame. Where on a larger head size, the sweet spot is gonna be much bigger and therefore you're gonna have a lot more surface area to work with without having those miss hits, all right? So the key with this sweet spot is that it's gonna be a lot easier to enjoy the game and you're gonna have an easier time producing power. So you might be thinking, well, why would I ever, why would anyone wanna play with a smaller racket head and, and have a smaller sweet spot? Control, once you learn power, you wanna make sure that you're getting control on kind of that plow through. Now, a word of warning, I wouldn't go up above 110 on the racket head size. You can buy them in the 120 range, but those rackets are more, more so made for like the very beginner, the very beginner, or maybe an older adult that is kind of limited with their range of motion and doesn't have that kind of quick twitch that's necessary in order to play with a smaller frame. The reason being is that that 100 square inches to 110 is still gonna teach you how to time the ball and really start reinforcing those proper fundamentals. You wanna make sure that you're still learning to time the ball and watching the ball to the strings and sometimes playing with too big of a racket head makes it, it's almost like cheating if you will. And you never really learn how to target the center of the racket. So make sure you don't go too big. 100 to 110 square inches is the perfect size if you're just getting started. Next thing we have to talk about is the weight of the racket. And this varies significantly, but just remember the heavier the racket, the more it's made, it's designed for an advanced player. You see, an advanced player doesn't have a hard time creating racket head speed and has really good refined technique. But if you're just getting started or you're playing more and you're still establishing your technique, you want a racket that's maneuverable, that's easier to create power by creating racket head speed. You see, the lighter the racket, the easier it is to swing and get it moving. My recommendation here is somewhere between nine ounces and 10.5 ounces. I really kind of like that mid range. If you can find something, you know, around that 10 ounces, I think that's always a, a pretty good fit. Um, but this is gonna vary, just depending on your size, your strength, your experience in sports. And this is definitely something where you're gonna wanna get out and swing several rackets to find your own personal preference. But don't play with too heavy of a racket. If you're playing something that's up in the 11s, it's gonna to be too heavy, it's gonna be cumbersome. It's gonna be really difficult to keep the contact out in front, and you may just find that you're having some arm issues as a result. Next up, we're talking about the balance of the racket. And so what the balance is referring to is exactly what it sounds. You wanna find a racket that's either evenly balanced, you can see here as I hold it from the throat, it's not really tilting. It's nice and balanced, kind of right through the middle, or you wanna find a racket that is head heavy. So you can see here immediately this racket, the Clash 108, the head is tilted down. The reason you want a racket that's evenly balanced or head heavy is it's gonna help produce more power. It's also gonna ensure that the swing is happening more in front and the racket is leading 
all the way to the follow through, helping with proper technique. So make sure you have the right balance in the racket. We're not looking for a racket that's super head light because that means the, the weight is predominantly in the handle and that is for more advanced players. Now the stiffness of the rocket is a really important detail to pay attention to. You see a more flexible frame or moderately flexible frame is gonna be really important to have if you're just starting out in the game. These rackets are gonna be more arm friendly. So as you're learning proper technique, you want something that's going to help keep tennis elbow and other tendonitis at bay. All right, so the more flex point, the more forgiving on the arm. It's also nicer on those off center hits, a little bit more forgiving so that you have some playability despite not being able to find that sweet spot that we talked about. So make sure you're looking for a, a, a flexible racket. Every manufacturer has their different grade, but the good news is I'm gonna tell you the three rackets that I think are the best and they all have good flex points, so you're safe. All right, you staying with me? I know a lot of math so far. One more little detail on the math. Rackets come with different string patterns. They can be tighter or looser. As a beginning tennis player, you wanna keep it looser. So that means less strings in your racket, believe it or not. You want, you're looking for a 16 by 19 string pattern and you wanna stay away from like the 18 by 20s. The tighter string patterns are gonna give players more control, but they tend to be less forgiving and a little bit more difficult on the arm. Whereas the 16 by 19 is gonna give you more power. It's gonna give you access to more spin. And those are things you want as a beginning tennis player. The next thing we gotta talk about is the grip. I know you're thinking, man, who knew tennis rackets could be customized so much, but we all have different size hands. So the grip is going to come in different sizes. The rule of thumb, or better yet, the rule of your index finger, is simply when you're holding a racket, you wanna make sure that your index finger fits snugly in between your fingers and the rest of your hand, your palm. And that that's typically gonna be a pretty comfortable grip. Now, my advice is always, it, you're, we're talking about the base grip. Your base grip, you want that plus an over grip to be the most comfortable. So here, this racket came with a base grip, much, much thicker. It's, it's actually what's stapled into, glued down to the handle itself. And then it has an overgrip. Now, the reason this is, is that the overgrips are super cheap. They're like a buck a piece typically. You're gonna get a big old reel, you know, relatively inexpensive. And they're gonna wear out really fast. So you always wanna make sure you're just replacing your overgrip and not the actual base grip. So. You're gonna to wanna to demo rackets, you're gonna to wanna to, want to play with them and make sure that you're starting with different grips, grip sizes, and then putting an overgrip. For most players, four and three eighths is going to be the most comfortable. It's what I play with. I think I have pretty average size hands, it might be a little small, I don't know. But that is my suggestion. So I promise you, I would tell you my three favorite rackets for beginner tennis players, and here they are. Up first, the Head Boom Team 2022. The Head Boom line is, is a great line for beginning tennis players, but I specifically like the Head Boom Team 2022 version. It's got 102 score inch frames, so super forgiving, a ton of power, a ton of feel, and it's a racket that really allows the beginning player to move into their game you know as they develop a bigger serve and start getting more confident with volleys and such it's a rocket that's not going to hold them back as they progress the head boom team 2022 comes in at a weight of 9.7 ounces and for a lot of players this is going to be a good weight because it's going to be super maneuverable but if you're looking for a little bit more heft you can try the head boom mp 2022 100 100 score inches, and that racket comes in unstrong at 10.9 ounces. This racket can give you a little bit more plow through and control with the extra weight. My next recommendation for a beginner's racket is the Babolat Pure Drive 107 from 2021. So a little bit of an older racket, but don't get me wrong, the Pure Drive is a legendary line. And this racket is just made for the beginner intermediate that is, is just gonna start out because the 107 head size is gonna be much more forgiving. But what I really like about this frame is that a player can grow into it. They, if they play, you know, from year one to year three, this racket wouldn't need to change. So it's good investing. It's got a ton of power, a ton of spin. And this 107, although the, the pure drive is tend to known be a stiffer racket and is a little bit higher than, than the flex point that I typically advise, it's made to actually soak up those harsher vibrations 
from that stiff construction, it's much more flexible than the traditional pure drive. And this is due to those carbon layers that's interwoven in this particular model. So this is a fantastic racket if you're just getting started. Unstrung, it's coming in at 9.9 .9 ounces. It's the perfect tweener racket if you're just getting started with tennis. Last but not least, the Wilson Clash 100 V2. It's my favorite racket for the, the player that's just starting out. And this is because of its versatility between levels. If you're a beginning tennis player, it'll work perfect for you, but even advanced tennis players, players playing at the 4045 still have a ton of success and enjoy playing this racket. Now, the 100 square inch frame, this particular model that I'm referencing, comes in with an unstrung weight of 10.4. So a little bit on the heavier side, but if that is too heavy or cumbersome for your size, your playing ability, you can also check out the Wilson Clash 100L. And the L stands for light. So this racket unstrung is coming in at 9.8 ounces. So much more maneuverable, but maybe you need a bigger racket head. You know, we talked about that larger sweet spot and then you can check out the Wilson Clash 108 V2 as shown earlier in the video. But the Wilson Clash was made to be super arm friendly, really helps with that vibration, making sure you don't get tennis elbow, but it's also super accessible to power and spin. It just feels good. The ball feels plush off the strings. So if it's your first time swinging a tennis racket, you start getting that feeling that hooks you to the game and it's really a standout racket. So as promised, I was gonna give you recommendations for more affordable rackets. And these rackets are also super great and they're much more affordable. And that's the Babolat Boost Drive 105. Cool looking racket, has same attributes as some of the other rackets, just the materials aren't quite as advanced. So that price point is gonna be a lot more friendly. And along those lines, you can also find a Yonix racket, the E-Zone Ace 102, that is also a, a fantastic racket for players just starting out. Players that swear by Yonix love, they're more of an octagon shaped handle and the shape of the head, which is a little bit different and provides a different feel than some other rackets. But both of these rackets, the Babolat Boost Drive 105 and the Yonix E-Zone Ace 102 are awesome, affordable rackets if you're just getting started in the game of tennis. So that's it. Those are the attributes that make up a great beginner's tennis racket. And those are my favorite five rackets, the top three for players looking to play more serious and the top two as far as being more affordable. Now, there were a lot of honorable mentions. I had a hard time coming up with this list, and some people might be thinking, Nate, you're not a beginner. What do you know about beginning tennis rackets? Well, I've worked with a lot of beginners, and this is getting demos into their hands and, and, and really getting their feedback and also playing with them. Uh, before I recommend a racket, I always like to get out there and test it and see what it feels like. And in my opinion, these are the rackets that stood out. But in the link below, I want you to check it out. You'll, you'll see all the rackets that I've got here that I've mentioned, um, but you're definitely gonna wanna check out the Player Court Marketplace because if you are a member, you're already saving. That's right, you save immediately being a Player Court member so you can go buy any of these rackets that we've talked about at a discount. It's good news, I know, all right? So be sure to check out the Marketplace, super cool. You're gonna see, we, we actually even break it down from beginner, intermediate to advanced rackets, so these rackets are gonna be easy to find. But invest in your game, invest in the right equipment. Thanks for watching. See you next time here at Player Court.